that it's part of the demands or we can see a spill over to other mines within the platinum sector. We assist with that process, what we have done, we have through the Department of Labor with the Minister of Labor to pull together the unions, but also to make sure that they also don't undermine the processes of collective bargaining. So last week we had various meetings and the Minister of Labor where we are satisfied that they're pulling the unions together. And also where they're saying that there are no unions, the concerned workers through representatives, they must also be brought on board mm -hmm. so as to find the mechanisms of dealing with the matter. We also considering processes of even bringing external mediation mm -hmm. in making sure that the unions which is, are said to be at conflict can start working together because the key issue is about worker issues or concerns. So we've put up that team which intends then to deal with those issues through the Minister of Labor. Yeah, internationally, Minister, there's a growing perception that it's becoming uh, difficult to do business in South Africa. Various analysts cite rising labor costs. They speak of uh, increasing power costs. They speak of uh, political instability now in the wake of the violence in Marikana. From where you sit, is there a concern and what is government doing to try and address that? Well, I must say that these are issues of concern. We know that uh, the issue of labor costs, precisely that's what we've got to look at to say to what extent what is being tabled, being a realistic. And these are some of the issues which the Minister of Labor is looking at. We believe that we have proper structures through the Labor Relations Act when it comes to the bargaining structures. And this is one of the processes. One of the issues which we have addressed is for the platinum sector as a sector mm -hmm. to come together and stop working in isolation and competing because that also it also opens and opens them up for any approach by any individual. So far, there is a principal commitment for centralization of working conditions. I think that is going to take us at least one step forward where then you can create an industry with clear standards. That's one thing we will be doing within the platinum industry. But the other issues which uh, one would say are political issues, I must say that uh, any situation, you'll always find that there are individuals who want to exploit the situation. As you can see now when things are normalizing, People are saying that they are not into that, but also it's quite clear that the violence which we have seen, unfortunately, has led to a lot of fear amongst workers who want to work. And part of the engagements with the stakeholders is to make sure we stabilize the environment. Mm. And if there are indeed legitimate issues which affect workers, they need to come together and start negotiating on those issues. So the employers have agreed, all the unions have agreed. Now, when one looks at the figures, one report that I saw suggested that actually South African output uh, within the whole mining sector is now below 1994 levels. And the suggestion is that South Africa missed out on the commodities boom from 2000 because of all these other issues. Now, what is government doing to try and make sure that we become again a very uh, attractive investment destination for foreign companies? Because there's a suggestion we actually are less attractive than other parts of the world. Well, I, d I don't want to agree with you to say that we are less attractive. We are an attractive where I sit. We're seeing lots of interest in the South African mining sector. I must say we've seen new players who are coming into the space. And we also have to know mm -hmm. that we have a history. It's not just automatic. In, 2000, in the year 2000, when we lost out, there was big discussions engagements in creating a regulatory framework. That's the period. And there was a lot of uncertainty because no one knew what would be the outcome, what would be the framework to come into the mining sector. Mm. And it's only in 2004 where there was a proper promulgation and agreements amongst the party what needs to govern the industry. We are at that point and with the current situation we've identified electricity infrastructure as the gaps. That is why today we are happy that uh, we have your Presidential uh, Infrastructure Coordinating Commission, which is looking at the, mine, at, at, the, at the infrastructure in the country, your electricity and all that. And I am proud to say in 2010, as the mining sector, we came together and say, what are the weaknesses? What are the blockages which don't allow the mining industry to grow, we identified infrastructure, electricity, high cost of electricity, road, rail. And if you look at what is happening right now, Transnet, it ceased with that process of making sure that they grow the, the railway infrastructure. If you look at energy, 
that's one of the areas which we're looking at. The issue of uh, Waterbeck, mm. it's one of the biggest areas which has been identified as government which will unleash potential for our energy sector. Yeah. So I'm just saying these are the issues. Mm. They were a problem because we also have to acknowledge for a very, very long time in South Africa, there was no replenishment of our infrastructure. And it's for the first time where government comes on board and say, wait a bit. Yeah. If we want to see mining contribute positively, we must help them.